Welcome, gentle people, to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. Today I'm going to add another piece to my Autumn Entertainment Collection. I've already created several sets of beverage coasters in that Autumn palette. The Russ, the Golds, the Browns, the Cranberries. I've created this beautiful shot glass paddle, again in that same color palette. Beautiful centerpiece, heart-shaped centerpiece, autumn palette. I even have napkin rings. So that what you'll be able to do is purchase these items and do a beautiful tablescape. I discovered acrylic pour painting in 2019. At that time, I learned a variety of techniques, including the dirty pour, the flip cup, the string pull or chain pull. One of my first pieces that I liked was a tree ring pour, uh, and I put that painting up in my grandchildren's room. So a technique that I used that I really did enjoy was doing a balloon dip technique. And so today we're going to do a charcuterie board using the balloon dip technique. I have never done it with resin. I have only done it with acrylic paint. So we're going to see how this works out. Um, see if I can actually transfer from acrylic paint pouring to resin. So now let's go over the materials that we will need for this project. So first of all, we have a really attractive 18 inch by 12 inch bamboo cutting board. And then we always tape the back of the board anytime we're going to do any resin or any acrylic painting. And to avoid having any of the wood show through, if you are using a light colored acrylic paint or if you're using a light colored mica powder, um, I always prime my board with gesso. And of course you need a brush to paint the gesso on. I have used a variety of resins, but I tend to prefer the Craftmark resin because I usually have a 40% off coupon, which makes it extremely affordable. So that would be our part A, and that would be our Craftsmart part B. And of course we need a measuring cup. Rather than use small paper cups for this project, I am going to be using my little resin bowls. I have, what, four of these of the resin bowls. And of course you need your nitro gloves to protect your hands. Five stir sticks for the resin. In terms of mica powders, I'm going for an autumn color palette. So I will be using the Magic Fly Copper, the Magic Fly Cherry Red, I think you can see that, Magic Fly Chocolate Brown. I have fallen in love with this May Spring Golden Labradorite. And I was going to do the background, the base in white, but decided to see what will happen if instead I use this Bling It Interference Gold. And then just for a little bit of bling, um, I may or may not wind up using the Eye Candy Tabagold. I will be adding some Resi Blast which I used in my last video to see if that will help us make some cells. And in order to create the design, uh, I'm using some balloons. Doesn't matter what color, just balloons. And I believe that's it. I have marked with a pencil on the board a line right here and a mark right there. 
because I'm going to be putting resin on the bottom of the board. We're not going to spend time taping around this handle for this particular project. So we need to tape the back side of the bottom of this board. And I always tape about a sixteenth of an inch inside the edge so that when you pour your resin or your acrylic paint for that matter that it runs right over that edge and gives a really nice clean finish. Once the tape is down, run your fingers along the edge to make sure that is nice and tight. And then you're going to take a clean razor blade and just get rid of the excess. Again, run your fingers along the edges there to make sure that's tight. And then we are going to take our gesso and we are going to put a primer coat of paint on there. Instead of doing a straight line on this, I'm going to kind of <clears throat> give this sort of a curved line. We'll do a curve. Instead of a straight line today, we'll do a curve. I'm in a curve mood. Be sure, oh, I keep getting these heavy boards, that you do the sides because the resin will run off the sides, run off the edge. Okay, and then we're going to leave that to dry. Let's get this set up. I'm going to put my um, silicone mat on here to catch the resin. And then we are going to elevate this board. And of course, I love my yogurt cups. never done the balloon dip using resin. I have done it with acrylic paint and once it was dry then I sealed it in resin but I've never actually done it in resin so we're gonna see how this works out and of course I need to mix my resin first so we're going to do we are going to do 50 milliliters of part B.
and 50 milliliters of part A. Different manufacturers have different amounts of time that they want you to mix their resin. You always want to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Craftsmart resin says five minutes, so I'm going to start stirring this. I'm going to put it on fast forward so you don't have to sit and watch me do this for five minutes. But here we go. Now I normally do 100 milliliters of resin to do this portion of the board. Uh, since I haven't done it this way, uh, I'm just going to kind of guess it. So I am going to pour about half of this, about 50 milliliters, yep yeah, that's actually, that's good, pour about 50 milliliters into this cup. And this will be for the Bling It Interference Gold. And I'm going to use this as the background, as the background color. And I have no idea what this will do by itself. So I'm going to mix this. And then I'm going to spread this on the board, wherever it's white, I'm going to spread this. So instead of using a white, something a little different, the interference. That's the interference gold. We'll set that there. Then we'll pour the other colors. <clears throat> we'll divide the resin into these other cups, <clears throat> into these resin bowls. These are nice for pouring small amounts, and since this is not a big, we're not doing the whole board, uh, this should work just fine should have enough resin to do the whole thing. A lot, some people have said, you know, they don't want to watch me mix the resin. This is a waste of time. And so again, you can fast forward through this. So I'm going to start with the cherry red. You only need a little bit since these are just little tiny bowls. And we are going for an autumn palette. I left the picture on my desk. I'll go get it. These little bowls are really convenient. I don't know if you can, you can see this bowl has a little cutout on each side, and I like that because then you can rest your stir stick. These bowls do not have the little cutout. Okay, so now we're going to do the copper. One of my absolute favorite colors, this golden Labradorite. We have the chocolate brown. We'll 
think I really need as much chocolate brown, so I'm going to pour some more of that in there. Oops. 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 Okay, so there you have it, my color palette. If this were a canvas, what I would be doing is pouring my white or whatever color base paint you want. Um, I have always used white, so let's see if I have poured enough of this. Oh, that's pretty, that's kind of pearlescent. with my palette knife before I invested in buying some palette knives I was using the backs of plastic spoons they work just as well whenever I use resin and I have a border like this I never go right up to the edge because once you heat the resin it will expand and then it'll go over the edge. So we're just going to reminding people make sure you're doing the sides of your boards and once this resin is heated it's going to run over it's going to thin out and run down the sides anyway but always start by making sure that you have your sides done I have a little left I always 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 save a little bit of your resin just in case you have a spot that you need to fill in or whatever so now I'm going to pop any air bubbles with my heat gun So off camera, I blew up two balloons, and um, I'm going to use those to create my design. There are a variety of ways that you can do this. I have done this as a puddle pour, where I pour one color, pour another color on top, another color on top, another color on top. Uh, I'm going to do this not as a puddle pour, but I'm going to do this as just individual colors. So we'll start right here with a brown. And I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go around that with a little bit of red. That looks dark to me. A little bit of gold. Actually, I'll leave it like that I'll leave it like that and so then what I'm going to do with this balloon is I'm just going to press the balloon down into the resin again I don't know how this is going to work out because I've done this with acrylic paint in the past but we'll see we're just going ooh it slides oh well, that's not bad you know what I didn't do I didn't add any of the resi blast. So we're going to add this to, we're going to add a couple of drops of the resi blast to the gold, two, three. Let's stir that. And 
and a couple of drops of that to the let's add it to the red okay and I don't know if this will make a difference okay so again we're going to pour some red in the center we're going to actually I'm going back to my puddle pour oh, I'm going back to my old way of doing things and let's put some gold around here and let's do some copper slides. Ooh, that slides a lot. Okay, so rather than waste this resin that's on here, I'm just going to push this down and see if we can use that resin. Oh, that's very light. Okay. Well, I do see some cells forming right there. So let's You know what, I think I'm just going to do it as a... Well, the one thing I can tell you, this moves a lot. This is not giving me quite the effect I was going after, but uh, we'll see what it looks like when it's done. And what I'm doing with the balloon, rather than put it, let it waste on the paper towel, I'm putting it on some ceramic tiles that I have. Let's, let's do a gold. You know, I think I will do a couple of these just as a puddle pour and see what happens. didn't do anything. Nope, don't like puddle pour. Okay, so that's one thing we have learned. And I mentioned that when the resin is heated, it will spread which is why I did not pour resin all the way up to that line. And you can see right here where it's spread past the line. There it's not at the line, but here it has spread past the line like I said it would. I don't know what to make of this. This is how we discover things. Hmm. 
Now I'm just pouring the fill in all the blank spaces. Oh yeah, that just slides. Whee! again and just do it with uh, <clears throat> and do it with acrylic paint so you'll be able to see the difference What's going on on my tiles, though, is really pretty. Now that's nice. So my thoughts on this now are that I could probably have done this without without um, putting the base coat on here because again this resin is truly just sliding all over the place. And maybe now that it's getting a little thicker it might act because I'm getting kind of close to my working time. So let's see if we get a different.
So now I'm just pour, I'm just putting it anywhere. I I can't maintain the shape because the resin is sliding so much. So this is how we learn that what I did with acrylic paint does not transfer necessarily to resin. Now, now I'm just at a point of I don't have my design and we're at the end of this we're getting towards the end of my working time so I think I'm just going to use up all this resin since we clearly don't have the design I was going after we're just going to use this up do is get a couple of more tiles so that I have a set of four over here. Just going to balloon this thing and balloon my coasters, balloon this thing, and balloon my coasters, and balloon this, and balloon my coasters, and balloon this, and balloon my coasters, and balloon this. Now the other thing I will also say is I use the interference gold. interference gold and I think the background could have been darker
pop any air bubbles. So I'm going to take these coasters, you can see what they look like, and take this resin that's on this mat and just go along the edges here. Okay, so that's that. So now I need to clean this board. And we're going to just take our finger and just run our finger along this edge here. Ooh. Okay, so now I need some alcohol to clean this board. All this stuff that's spilt all over, all this resin that's spilt all over this board. This is horrible. All of this up now before it hardens. Well, I just realized I have a little bit of the um, interference gold left. Oh, let me do something with this. Okay, so this was an experiment that went haywire, I guess. Um, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries and we look at it tomorrow. I have stuff so scattered here that I can't even cover it. It is the next day. And what looked like, I don't know, a mess yesterday actually looks kind of nice today. So that's what we're working with. 
for the board. And then believe it or not, the coasters all. Those are gorgeous. So we are now going to finish this. So what we need to do now is get the tape off the back of here and just sand where needed. And we're going to use our heat gun to soften the resin and the tape should peel right up. Perfect. That looks good. So now I'm going to heat this again and then just take this little lip. This, take this little lip off of here. Now we're going to take our sanding block and just smooth that down. So what we need to do now is just put some oil on her. I use 13 chefs to oil my boards. There are a variety of products. I have a picture. Ooh. I have a picture in the inset. I don't know it's on the up on the right, up on the left. I don't know. And again, I like to use my hands to oil my board. Make sure that you're oiling the sides as well. So while the oil is soaking in to the board, I'm going to clean the back of those coasters. Surprisingly, these are beautiful. And this was just a way to utilize the resin that was left on the balloon. And so I did not tape the back of these because I didn't expect to have four, but since I have four. We need to get the resin off the back of these. So same thing, we're going to use our heat gun. I have this, this heat shield. When I was originally working with ceramic, I would put my coasters on a dish towel. And I can't tell you how many dish towels I scorched before I finally broke down and purchased this heat retardant pad. Plumbers use it when they're soldering pipes. Works great for this. We're gonna heat that and just take our razor blade. Okay, so I'm going to now take these. <clears throat> I'm going to take these out back and I'm going to spray the back of these. 